Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. I've got here a 2016 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sahara, and we're gonna do a pretty major Alpine restyle radio upgrade to it. So factory it had the small button style radio, but it did have the Alpine audio system. The problem is that factory radio is really holding it back. So most of the time our customers come in, they say, I can't hear the audio good with the windows down, with the top off, and I really can't hear that subwoofer that's in there from the factory. Well, once we do this upgrade, it's gonna to come to life and it's gonna sound amazing. So today I'm gonna to show you how to put the I-509 WRAJK radio in from Alpine. It's completely plug and play. It's a nine inch screen. It is waterproof, which is awesome. Most of the other radios aren't. And we're gonna add Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly to this Jeep. So hang out as I show you step-by-step -step how to install this radio, as well as how to add a backup camera to your Jeep Wrangler. All right, so let me show you everything that's gonna come in the box that we're gonna show you how to install as we move forward. First off, Alpine's gonna give you great step-by-step -step directions uh, to walk you through each part. And we're gonna also show you how they show you to do it, but actually on video. We're gonna get our nine inch Alpine screen. It's weather resistant, IPX rated. So if it rains, we don't have to worry about our radio not working any longer. You never know when you get the top off, you're gonna get caught out in a storm. Uh, we're also going to get the brain to the radio as well as a new center dash section. I think this thing is awesome. It looks so much better in your Jeep. And it comes with these hard buttons on each side that connect to the radio. So we still have a full 9-inch screen for display along with easy buttons to touch. That also keeps us from getting a lot of fingerprints on our screen. One of the best parts not only is the looks and the sound we're going to get at the end, but the ease of install. And part of that is a completely plug-and-play iData harness to use with our iData Link Maestro module and our Alpine radio. So this is gonna plug into the factory plug, this is gonna plug into the radio, and everything that goes in here, whether it be the Maestro module or any, even the camera, it's all plug and play, so no wiring to be done on your end. We've got a GPS an antenna that we're gonna be mounting up on the roll bar. We'll show you step by step how to do that. So this radio doesn't have GPS navigation built in but it does do Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wirelessly, and this is gonna help your phone be even more accurate in its navigation directions. Also gonna show you how to install the Bluetooth microphone, the proper place to put that, and how to get that installed as well. So uh, last but not least, in this install, this does not come with the radio, but we're doing it separate. We're doing the HCE RCAM WRA rear backup camera. So we're gonna take our spare tire off, mount this in the spare tire, and show you how to route that wiring properly to the front to finish this install out. So hang out as I go over all of it. Let's get the Jeep turned around here, get it disassembled, and I'll show you how to get the factory radio out and we'll start going back together. All right, so as one of our first steps, we're gonna start with our backup camera. I'm gonna go ahead and get our tire off and then we'll get our camera out and I'll show you where it mounts and how it goes on. Now that mount does go behind the tire and the camera's gonna come right through this upper hole. Now if you see you have a wheel that does not have a hole or a place for a camera to go, this probably isn't a good location to put it. But most vehicles, most of the wheels we see on Jeeps have a location that our camera can stick out and be seen. So let's go ahead and get this tire off and then we'll show you how to mount it. All right, so in our camera kit from Alpine is gonna be this nice mount that goes right behind our spare tire. Now it's gonna come with this extension already installed that allows you to adjust it up and down. If you have a larger wheel, like a 20 inch or 22 inch wheel, you're probably gonna use this extension. On this stock sized wheel, we're gonna take this off and we're just gonna bolt it directly to this top hole. All right, so I've taken the little extension off and I just mounted the camera right to that top hole. Now you'll see there's a separate Allen head bolt, a lock washer, and a nut just for this in the packaging. Now we're just gonna line it up, put it where our studs go. And you're gonna see inside the package, you're gonna get these three E-clips. So those are meant to go over top of these studs and they're gonna hold the camera when you take your spare tire off. It's also gonna hold it till we put our spare tire back on. I'm just gonna clip those on. Then I just take a hammer and a socket that goes over these studs. And I'll knock them all the way in. All right, so now on to running our wiring. So included in the package is gonna be some zip ties. Normally I'm gonna take and zip tie the wire down to the bottom of the bracket. Just right over the top there. 
And I'm gonna bring this cord on down. We're gonna follow the spare, I'm sorry, the third brake light from here on. So follow its wiring down and into the Jeep. So I zip tie around that. We just don't want these wires loose hanging in here behind the spare. All right, so normally there's enough lead just to come right out the side here, out from behind that tire carrier, and we're gonna zip tie it there so it doesn't fall back in behind. All right, so we're gonna take our wiring into the Jeep right through this grommet. So let's go ahead and grab that and pull it out. Let's go to the other side. We'll take our panels off and we'll fish our wire out to this connection. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these two plastic covers uh, to get access to where we're gonna run our wire. And normally they're here and there's not all of this other mess. Somebody had glued a cover onto this back door. Kind of a crazy thing, I've not seen it before, but we'll make sure the owner can put that back on later. But we're just gonna come to the bottom of this. We're gonna unsnap this cover all the way around. Just using a panel removal tool to help pull on that. That's gonna expose our factory wiring. We're also gonna take and do the same thing on the other side. Just come in behind this panel, unclip the factory connectors, take that off for access. So now, if you were to look through here, you're gonna see right where we just pulled that grommet loose and where this wire runs in. So let's grab our cable that comes with our camera and we'll feed it back out that hole. All right, so I wanna clear up maybe a little confusion when you get into your package. So when you get your Alpine rear view camera, rear backup camera, it's gonna come with this black cable with this white connector on the end. If you have a restyle radio that's pre-wired for a camera, this is the only cable you're gonna use. It's gonna plug into the camera at your spare tire and the cable's gonna be ran all the way up to the front and this is gonna plug into the radio. It's that simple. If you're using a universal radio or maybe a non-restyle Alpine radio, you're gonna use this additional connector. On it, we're gonna have our power and ground to power up our camera, along with our RCA output to feed into the radio. But this is a digital camera and it's gonna go straight in with these feeds. Uh, this HD camera will be fed straight into our radio and give us our best picture just by plugging straight in with this connector. All right, so I'm just gonna take our cable. We're gonna leave this protector on the end to keep from getting any dirt or debris inside of our wire. We're gonna feed it through here. All you're gonna do is try to grab that other end with your hand. Once you get that, we're just gonna feed it right back out this hole where we pulled that grommet out. All right, let's go to the other side and I'll show you how to finish up that connection. All right, so back here where our factory grommet is, I normally am gonna take a razor blade or razor knife and I just cut this right down the side of it to make room to actually feed our new wire in the hole and reuse this grommet. And when we're done and we go back together, we're just, gonna fit, we're just gonna put this facing downward. That way it'll seal up and any water gets on it will just drip off. Also included, Alpine is gonna send you this piece of heat shrink tubing. You're gonna take that and put it over your cable before you plug your camera in. Once you get your camera in, you're gonna slide it over and we're gonna hit that with a torch so it'll seal it up and make it watertight. For the time being, I'm gonna cut this other zip tie loose just to get this a little further away as I'm torching it. So as you apply heat to this, whether it be a heat gun, a lighter, a small micro torch like we have here, it's gonna shrink. There's also glue on the inside. It's gonna help hold this together so it doesn't come disconnected. And water's not gonna come in there and corrode the connections. So once you get it hot enough, you'll start seeing the glue just start easing out the ends of it. And then let that dry. Now watch out, this is gonna be very hot for probably about a minute. All right, so I'm gonna put my zip tie back on here. Take this grommet, make sure I've cut it enough to get our wire in. Now be careful as you do this that you don't cut yourself and that you don't cut the wire itself that's inside the grommet. You'll see there's a plastic protector keeping you from being able to cut into that wire, but just make sure you don't. So I'm gonna reach on the other side and just pull our excess wire back that way, pulling it in with this grommet, and then pushing this back in. Put one more zip tie on it just to secure this side to keep anything from trying to pull it loose later. All right, so at this point, let's go ahead and put our spare tire back on. And you'll see we do have some adjustment here in our camera at the end. Once we get our radio in installed, we will power it up and we'll adjust this to whatever angle we want to see. But it's a very wide angle uh, lens, so you can see pretty well just about anywhere you put it. All right, 
out. So we've got our spare tires back on. Let's move to the other side and finish up our wiring. All right, so now that we've got our wire inside, we're gonna go ahead and zip tie, following along those fac that factory wiring just to make sure everything's held in place. I'm probably a little overkill with zip ties, but just don't want them to droop down. Alpine's gonna give you like five of these. I'm probably gonna use 20. So you may need a few extra if you wanna do it exactly like we did. Always flush cut all your zip ties so nobody later gets scratched or cut from the ends of them. All right, let's snap our factory panel on. So your factory panel has these little ears on the top. We'll put all those in the factory holes and then the bottom just clips in. Let's do the same thing on the other side. It's feeding the ears in behind the plastic, locking it in place as well. So when it gets to here, I normally put one zip tie in the middle of this factory wiring just to keep it from sagging. And I'll put one up here where it goes into the car. This is pretty easy to route to the front. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull this panel back some. We're gonna follow the wire right around the top edge here. This carpet is loose, it's not really secured by anything. We're gonna run it through the Jeep. All right, so we're gonna take the rest of our wiring now. We're just gonna route it toward the front of the Jeep. We're gonna follow this factory wiring behind this plastic panel. It's just held in with some push clips, so you can really just grab hold of it and you can pull it. You'll see it pops out enough that now you can feed this wire around the top edge of it. Once you get it around this and into the Jeep, you're just going to follow the carpet up to the front. Get that and put it back on. So I'll snap all of this back in where it goes. Put our little top part here back on. I shouldn't have just fell off like that, but it did. All right. So now the carpet isn't tied in with anything. So we're just going to pull it back. We're going to go under the carpet down to the side of the seat. At that point, we'll start zip tying it to the factory harness all the way up to where the radio goes. All right, so we're just going to continue to feed this wire under this carpet. As you see from the factory, it's just loose. As I come through here, I'm going to grab the factory wiring harness behind here. And I'm just going to zip tie to it, making sure to hold this wire where we want it to stay. We just don't ever want it to get to where it can get pinched in a seat bracket or somewhere where somebody's opening and closing a door. So we're going to put that in there. We're going to flush cut that one as well. And then continue on down the side here. There's going to be wiring running all the way down. Again, grab yourself a zip tie, secure it as you go. All right, we're gonna continue on down here toward the, the B pillar here. We're gonna pop some trim loose and run this wire underneath. All right, so now we're gonna remove a couple of these factory push clips. You're gonna to wanna to get a panel removal tool that will go underneath it. They're normally really tight and difficult to get out, but we wanna save these because we need to reuse them later. So we're gonna take that one out and we're gonna take the one right up here at the side of the B pillar. Once those are out, this trim will just pull out and we can easily fish our wire toward the front. So we're gonna start that process now. It's kind of going underneath the carpet here. We're gonna to continue to zip tie down to the factory harness as we go. And always cut your zip ties as you go along. All right, so we're gonna run this on up gonna run it a good ways underneath here and we're gonna move up to the front door, pull our trim back and pull it on up forward. All right, so we're gonna to continue to remove a couple more of these clips with our panel tool. These can be very tight and very difficult to get removed. Definitely find all of them that you drop, save them, we're gonna be putting them back in. While you're here, go ahead and remove this one beside the seat because we're going to be pulling that front panel next. 
keep in mind, it is a different size. It does not go where the other ones went. All right, so now we're gonna pull our panel back. Look in here and see if we can see where we fed our wire. All right, so I've got it here. I'm gonna pull my excess up here to the front. So at this point, while this is loose, we're gonna take this panel, we're gonna push it out and lift it up and over. We're gonna to try to go toward the front, pulling out on the bottom of it as we go because there's some clips that release from the bottom. All right, so once we've got those released, we can continue running right up here with this factory harness. All right, so just continue on following this wiring up to the firewall, the firewall is the, the part between the inside of your Jeep and your engine area. So just follow this all the way up. Trim your zip ties. We're gonna bring it up to the front edge of the carpet. We're gonna go behind that carpet. We're just gonna follow it on around here to what I call the center console or the center of the dash. And right up in this area, we're gonna come up and we're gonna follow up to our radio. So it's kind of hard to see in this dark area. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that behind the carpet. We'll come back with the wire up in. All right, so I've got my wire routed up here to the front edge, but I wanted to show you this. So there's two of these at the firewall holding the carpet in. They're just a little nuts that you can unspin by hand. So unspin these, it'll let you get the carpet back. Then you can route the wire out so much better. And when you're done, definitely put them back in place. They're just gonna pop right back over these nuts to hold the carpet in place. All right, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put our panels back in and put all of our clips back where they go. And we'll move into radio install. All right, just make sure you've pushed your carpet back underneath this little lip here on the body and put both of our clips back here in our B pillar trim. And we've routed our camera wire all the way up toward the front. We'll pull our glove box and pull it up to the radio once we get the radio out. Let's move up there and get the radio. All right, so let's disassemble our dash to get our radio out. First, we're gonna remove the little plastic storage pocket here in the top. That's gonna expose one seven millimeter screw down below. Take that out. We're gonna take our panel removal tool and we're gonna pop our power window switch out. So we get it loose. On the back side, you'll see there's a little red tab on the connector. You need to slide it over before to let you unplug. So we've unplugged it. And then we did that to get to this little seven millimeter screw hidden in behind. Oh, it looks like somebody's had this one behind uh, out before. And it is not in the plastic, so we don't even actually have to take that one out. Now we're gonna pop the panel, they call this the knee bolster, below your knee. It's just held in with push clips. We'll pop that out from below the steering column. All that is is you pull it out at the top, releasing these clips, and then the bottom will come loose. Now behind here, there should be some more bolts. It looks like somebody didn't put those back in correctly last time. We'll correct that as we're going. They put them back in, but they didn't go through this top panel. So once all of that is loose, all those bolts have been removed. Just take this loose and work it out of your steering column. Make to bring it down, just like that. Take it out. Now the whole the whole middle of this later, we're going to cut. I'll show you how to do that. We'll replace it with our new Alpine overlay. But that has got us here to our radio. So our radio is held in with four more seven millimeter screws. And as you can see, somebody's previously been in here and broke this plastic, so that bottom bolt wasn't into anything. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the ones that weren't in right over to each side. That way we put them back in later in the correct place. All right, so our four screws are out of our radio, then our radio is just gonna slide forward. Okay, as we do that, you're gonna see a couple connections on the back. We're gonna have the white connection here is our FM antenna. This yellow one is our Sirius satellite antenna. And then we're gonna have our two connections for our radio wiring, such as our speaker wires. So this does have the factory Alpine system. Later we'll get into the directions on this. 
Uh, on the Alpine system, there's just a left and right signal. So there's only four speaker wires and you always have to make sure and swap the wires around so that your front signal of your radio is feeding these. These are actually on the rear, uh, rear colored speaker wires. You do that so that when you're making a Bluetooth call, that your call, which only comes in the front, comes through all your speakers. So that's in the directions. Make sure you look at this, see if you have four wires or eight wires, so you know if it's amplified or not, and you make those connections properly. So, got our radio out. Let's go to our directions. I'm sure next we're probably gonna pull our glove box get our camera wire up, and we'll start routing everything else we need to get our radio put in. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take the glove box out next because I'm gonna go ahead and get our rear camera wire into the front. It's as simple as folding it down, squeezing both tabs in, and your whole box just comes out. All right, so once that's out, we can reach in here and we can feed our wire into our dash area. Now you're going to see that there's some moving parts in here that operate some blend doors and temperature doors on your HVAC box. And you definitely don't want to leave it in a position that would interfere with that. So run it up toward the front of the dash. And then you should be able to reach your hand through like I'm doing. And grab that wire and pull it on out the top. Not hard at all. Once you have that done, I would take a zip tie and zip tie to the factory harnessing in here just to make sure it never gets over into those HVAC blend doors and then put your glove box back in. All right, so next we're gonna be getting ready to put our Bluetooth microphone. Alpine recommends putting it up here above the mirror. That's where we're gonna put it. Uh, in this particular Jeep, somebody's added some grab handles. We see this quite often, but we're gonna have to remove those to get the trim off. You may not have to do this step, but I'm gonna start there first and go ahead and get the grab handle removed. We've got our grab handle off. We'll have to put that back on later. But if you don't have that, you're gonna start up here at the visor. So we're just gonna pull it loose. We're gonna take a T20 Torx. We're gonna remove the two Torx screws that hold the visor in place. Just one on each side. and take your other visor and pull it loose as well. All right, so at that point, there should be, and there is in here, one little Phillips push clip. We're gonna get a screwdriver and pull it out. A little retainer with a Phillips headed uh, center to it. So we're gonna pull that out. Definitely catch that part because you're gonna need to put it back in later. we can actually just pull down just one of these Christmas tree can retainers holding this in place. We're gonna let it hang. Now we're gonna move on to this center bezel. This is held in with some push clips as well, so you're just gonna pull it. You're gonna hear it unclip, come loose. We're gonna do that all the way across. Now you're gonna see our factory wiring around here. So we're gonna take and put our pad for our microphone here, pull the cord through where our mirror goes, and zip tie it on along all the way across. So we're gonna take isopropyl rubbing alcohol and we're gonna clean this surface. That way that our sticky pad will adhere like it's supposed to. I'm gonna clean that well and then I'm gonna dry it and we're gonna let it dry while we run this wiring. All right, here's the microphone that is supplied in the kit. It comes with this base with this little self stick pad. Uh, the one that came with the 409 actually had a clip that wrapped around. I kind of liked it better because sometimes these are hard to get to stick and to stay. Uh, but we're just going to leave us some extra room coming out here and we're going to start zip tying this wire to that original wiring as we go. And then at the end, we'll stick that in that area we've already cleaned. Now, I'm gonna, you're going to probably think it's way overkill how many zip ties we're going to use to hold this. But the whole reason is going to make sure that our wire doesn't end up in one of these clips and get severed or cut because then it's not going to work. If 
you don't want to leave this hanging, you can just disconnect this temporarily. Secure this wire around everywhere that you see one of those little hooks. It goes in. Now we're just going to flush cut all of them with our zip tie cutters. All right, so let's get our panel, put all these little clips back in place. Our first one goes, and our second one, and the third one. And you'll see there's actually a guide pin here that will line you up. We've got to go underneath our existing trim on the other side. Get this guide pin where it goes. Once we've done that, all of our clips are pretty much going to line up. We're just going to snap it back. Put their visor in place. And now you're going to see we have our microphone hanging out here. And we'll stick that right up here. I'm going to wait and do that toward the end just to give it some more time for that alcohol to make sure it's all the way dry. Give us our best chance of sticking well. We're going to continue to zip tie down this front. They call it the A-pillar. But next, we've got to put our GPS sensor up on our roll bar, kind of overhead. We're going to route it up, and we're going to continue to zip tie it down as we go also. I'm going to unplug the factory mic. Get this out of our way. Now, someone has added some additional switches here. That's part of, part of these Jeeps. Normally, there's a lot of accessories that have been added that sometimes you have to take off to, to add your now newer accessory, but this normally just clips in. Yep, and that did. We'll just be able to lay it to the side and route our wiring down. It doesn't look like this is really gonna give us any problems. Other than the last person that did this broke most of the clips and had them all bent over. So we'll get all that straightened out and we'll do a better job as we go together than they did. All right, so most of the time, you're either gonna have an exposed roll bar here or you're gonna have one of these zipper style covers. You're gonna to need to unzip it if this is what you have because we're gonna to have to run the wiring inside of here. So we're just gonna pull back and expose the zipper and then unzip that so we have somewhere to run our wiring. All right, so let's change camera angles and get where I can show you where we put this GPS sensor on, the, on top. All right, so we're just gonna clean here on top of this roll bar with some more isopropyl alcohol. Wiping it clean where we're gonna stick our GPS sensor. All right, so on the back side of your GPS sensor, the GPS antenna, you're gonna see that it's got a self-stick pad. So we're just gonna stick this on top here, right out here where we just cleaned. All right, we're gonna unwrap our cable. Be sure that you don't kink these. Kinking these cables makes them not work well. We're just going to route this under here, under this factory padding, all the way around. This is going to keep a clear view of the sky, even with the top up. And this is the recommended location where to put it. I'm just going to route this underneath the foam all the way down through here. I'm going to go back on the inside and I'm going to zip all of this back up. All right, so we'll get our zipper back going. Our wiring is up here. Now we'll just continue on down this pillar with more zip ties. Anywhere you see a factory retainer, that should keep you from having that problem. So I'm just going to flush cut all of these. All right, 
this. Now we're going to take both of these cables. We're just going to route them on across to where the radio goes. So I'm going to start with my GPS one. Just going to, while my dash is off here, I've got easy access to just feed it right here above this AC vent. Across above the instrument cluster. cluster. All the way over here to where our radio goes. That's simple. simple. We, we have it ran all the way across. across. We're going to do the same, same thing with our Bluetooth, Bluetooth mic. mic. Both, Both those wires ran, ran up here into our, our radio compartment. compartment. Now, now we can put all this trim back together, which is what we're going to do now. now. See if, if I can correct, correct some, some faults from, from the previous person, person put, it put it together. together. a bit of the plastic in behind here. We're going to get it clipped all the way back in. All right, so that's back in correctly. Now I'm going to take our upper trim here. We're going to plug back in the factory Bluetooth mic. It's not doing anything, but we're going to plug it back in anyways. I'll line up this Christmas tree clip. Now we're going to put a couple of screws holding our visor back in place. So as you see, none of this is really hard. Some of it's a little time consuming, but with basic hand tools, it's pretty simple to accomplish these tasks. Just take it slow. A little at a time, hopefully this encourages you to be able to do this yourself. And if it's something you don't want to do yourself, you can definitely reach out to us here at Volunteer Audio and we can do the install for you. Let me get my uh, handle back here in place. done and we'll reassemble the other. All right, so that part has started.
last but not least, we're just going to undo this sticky pad. We're going to make sure we put our microphone right up here where we already cleaned the surface. It's supposed to be the best place to put it as far as picking up, as far as wind goes. So we've cleaned it. Well, hopefully it'll hang out there and it'll do really well. So let's move on to the next step. Uh, next on the agenda is we're going to have to do a little bit of modification to the dash to get the radio to fit as well as cutting the original panel and we'll show you how to put the brackets on the radio so we can come over here and bolt it all in. All right, so we're going to be removing this metal brace inside the dash just to make room for the radio. Well, let's get going in the right direction. It's two seven millimeter bolts. One on each side. Once you've removed those, they're not going to go back in later, so you'll have a few extra screws at the end. Don't worry about what you did with them. There's some that aren't going to go back in. So next, if you look at your directions from Alpine, we're going to cut this center brace out. So we're just going to come here on both sides. We've got a little saw. Cut down just like that. All right, that's going to make room for our larger radio to go in place. All right, so let's go over to the bench and I'll show you how to put the brackets on the radio. All right, so I'm gonna go back to this factory panel real quick and show you how to remove the vents because we have to remove these AC vents. They're gonna get transferred over into the new panel. So right here on top, there's a little black push clip. If you push it down, you can twist this over and this whole vent just comes out. If you don't do that, you're gonna end up breaking it. We don't want you to break it because we're gonna be reusing it. We don't want you out that money for new vents. So go ahead and take those out. Now, if you're looking at this, you'll see there's a factory line right here on this edge, and we're going to cut that with our saw. So we're gonna cut right up through here. We're gonna remove this section. This section can then get bolted back into the Jeep, and our new upgraded section here will replace right where that was. Man, it's gonna look so much better. So, don't be too scared about it. It's very easy. The other panel actually overlaps it very well. So just follow that exact line all the way down through there with your saw. And don't be afraid to do it. Let's get this saw out and get cut. All right, let me show you how to cut this panel. All right, just like that, we've cut it. So now we're just gonna take and just use your fingers and get any excess debris off the edges. It is plastic, so a lot of times as you're cutting, the stuff will kind of melt back together. What I'm using here was just a M12, uh, it's just a 12 volt Milwaukee handheld Sawzall. It's a one-handed Sawzall, they call it a Hacksaw. It makes it very easy to maneuver and do these little tight cuts. We find it to be one of our go-to tools. We also buy some little jigsaw blades uh, that they sell that actually go in. It's got the Sawzall top shank on it, but the actual blade looks like something that's on a jigsaw. I think they call it a scroll cutting blade. But we're just getting that extra debris off here. We've got that cleaned up. And it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I mean, it's pretty good. But our panel is going to completely cover all of this. So now we could actually reinstall this back on the Jeep because we've already ran our GPS antenna and such. So I'm going to go and throw that back in the dash. All right, so next step, I just want to show you where I put the uh, little foam strip they give you. It just goes on the front of the radio chassis. Where it says this side top, it's going to go toward the bottom just in the front. The screen's going to be right in front. That just keeps it from possibly vibrating on it and making noise later. Now we're going to install our brackets uh, that go on the face of our radio. So Alpine sends you two of these brackets. They also send you a bunch of Phillips screws. Already machine threaded for this. So we're going to start those in the front. There's a left and a right bracket. So 
So they're going to go on with the bracket facing the bottom of the screen as far as where the threaded holes are and the most inward location. They are marked right and left. So L goes on the left side, R on the right side. Relatively simple to figure out. We're also going to go ahead and take our display cables. You'll see they come from Alpine. It says display side. Display side is just going to plug in here to the back of the screen. Make sure it goes all the way in and it locks in. Feels like this one did. Then we're also going to have another cable here that plugs into our display as well. Let's take one side of that and plug it in. Go ahead and tighten these screws all the way up. All right, so we're going to take our brackets. We've got a right one and a left one. R goes on the right side again, and this is going to go to the side of the chassis of the radio. So this is kind of the brain of the radio. The other part is considered the display. Put our right and left brackets on. Very, very well thought out, very heavy duty brackets. All the directions are very good that comes along with this to make this a very, very simple and easy install. All right, so now that we have that done, we're going to slide our, <laughs> all right. So because I have my screen facing the wrong way, I put the right one on the other right side. Um, needed to be looking at it from the front. So we're swapping our right and left brackets now. That's going to make this line up a lot better on the other side. Easy to do when you have the screen facing away from you. We'll get those transferred over and we'll jump back into our install here. All right, so that's going to work out a lot better. So now that we have our screen brackets are right on the real right, we're now going to feed this up in under. We're going to come up in underneath this set of brackets. You're going to notice your two holes line up with the Brackets you've already put on the side of the radio brain or radio chassis. Let's get those started in place. There's no real adjustment to these. So it's just get them lined up and then get them tight. All right, so we're getting pretty close now. We have our radio screen and our brain to our radio all mounted to the brackets correctly. Now we can do just a little bit more wiring so we can take the cable that we just took from the front of our screen and you're going to see where it says head unit side, head unit side, so and all those that say head unit side are going to have a mating connector in the back that they plug into so we're going to go ahead and plug those in where they go. This is also going to be here where you're going to see where it says microphone in so that mic we ran earlier is going to plug into here. We have a Series X import. We have a factory antenna port. A lot of connections here that we can plug in. We're going to continue to do that as we go. Now this is uh, where it says button side. That's going to be for our display that goes out front on the back side of this panel. It plugs in right here. So make sure you leave that on the left side of the radio sticking out where you can plug it in at the end. All right, so I think it's time for us to get our computer out. We'll go ahead and flash our module, then we'll plug in our main harness, and I'll show you how to get the Maestro harness plugged in, and we'll go from there. All right, so on page five of your directions, it's gonna tell you how to program your iDatalink Maestro module. You're gonna download the WebLink desktop app or plugin, and it's gonna show you where to go right here in the directions to get this. Now, I've already got it. It's already loaded on my computer, because I do this quite often. So I'm gonna go ahead and load it. 
You will have to make a profile and set up a Weblink account. This is completely free, uh, but they just want to make sure that nobody's bootlegging the software. So you do have to download this to your computer, make an account, and then you're also going to have to have the serial number from the radio. So it's detected our Maestro module that I've got plugged into our USB port and it comes with the cable you need along with this. I can click here and say flash by vehicle. It sees it's for an Alpine. It knows it's for a Jeep, so it's most likely only gonna pop up some Jeep options here. So your make model, we have a 2016. Oh, we got a Jeep. And we've got a Wrangler Unlimited. Now next it's gonna ask us to look at our steering wheel and see what our button layout is. So do you have phone buttons or not on your steering wheel? Our particular Jeep does. It looks just like the picture here. So I'm gonna select that. Now it's gonna say what, what kind of radio you're using. This is pre-selected for Alpine, so we're gonna to go to Alpine. And now it's gonna to wanna to know the model of your radio. Now we're doing the I509WRAJK. So as this loads and these images populate, this is the one that we've got, so I'm gonna click on it. And now it brings up and it asks me for our serial number to our radio. Now you're gonna find that on the end of the big box that everything came in. You're also gonna find it on the box that says Music Halo I509. Alpine's kind of strange. They don't use the whole serial number. You normally start here at the D. So we're gonna go put our serial number in D. Now you're gonna use your serial number. These can only be used once. So even if you see mine, it's not gonna help you any if you try to do this number. I've typed it in, now we'll tell it to continue on. Invalid serial number, let me check it again. Sometimes you gotta add another digit in the front. Oh, actually, it's our internet was not connected properly, so let's try it again. All right, awesome. I just had to put one more character. There's a little question mark there. If you click on it, it's going to show you the three possible variations of serial number that need to be input. So now it says recommended firmware. It's got one recommendation for our Jeep with our steering wheel controls in this radio. We're just going to select it. It's the only option. Now it's gonna ask us some different things about our, I think our steering wheel control buttons are next, uh, along with options. So do we have a factory amplifier? This one does, so we wanna make sure that's selected. Everything else that is pre-done, we're just gonna leave selected, and hit continue. Now they're gonna already pick out the most common layout of steering wheel control buttons per this radio. This is very well thought out, but if you wanna change those functions, uh, you can actually do it shows you all the default functions, and everything can actually have two things. So if you quick press, say, volume down, it's going to do volume down. If you, do, if you hold volume down, it's going to do mute. So it's telling me again that I'm offline. My internet's a little in and out out here in the garage, so we're going to reconnect again. All right, after a short delay, we now have our internet reconnected. So again, steering wheel controls here. You've got multi-functions or preset to the best thing they can be, but if you want to go through and look at these, you could possibly change them. If you look over them, they're what you want, hit continue. So here's just kind of an overview of everything we've got. This is the Jeep we have, that's the phone buttons we have, that's our radio, there's our settings that we've done, and now once we've looked at that and we're okay with it, just hit flash. And now it's gonna flash our module just for this Jeep. So this is really cool because this having our data link Maestro, we're gonna plug into the OBD2 port with this connection. And we're going to be able to see things like our gauges and vehicle information on screen of the radio, something we couldn't do with our original radio. Um, it's going to show things like tire pressure, if the doors are open, all the different gauge layouts. Uh, depending on your climate control, sometimes it shows your climate control on screen. Okay, our flash was completed and successful, so now we're just going to move to the Jeep uh, and get it installed. But I guess first I'll walk you through the harness here on the bench. All right. So now that we've got our Maestro module flashed, we're gonna connect it to our harness. And you're gonna see there's quite a few connections here and they're all gonna have mating plugs on here. Now if you go to the directions, it's gonna show you where every single one of these plug in. I've done this before, pretty well know where they go. So I'm gonna go and plug them in, they're color coded. Most of them only plug in in one place. So we're just gonna make each one of these connections. If you have a question about them, 
like this one particularly he says rear camera uh, that's not going to plug into this box it's going to run in it's going to plug into a camera connection again the directions are really good on this so i'm going to flip over and show you real quick so if you go to go to page 13 you're going to see it's going to show your micro module and it's going to show you each one that's not used each one that is used and each one that is not used so on one side of it we're only going to have this black plug-in shows us here the other ones aren't used on the other side we have a three pin up front that is not used. We have a blue one that's not used. We're gonna have the green one plugged in, the black one plugged in, and then you're gonna have the data cable, which is the one I have plugged in here. So we have this plugged in correctly. We are able to double check that and look at it. Now we have one more cable to run in the Jeep. So this is gonna plug into our OBD2 port right underneath the driver's side. This is the diagnostic port in the car. We're gonna route this up to the radio. It's gonna plug into this connection and that's gonna give us our on-screen display of gauges and tire pressure and all of those things pulled straight out of the computer of the vehicle. So this is plugged in. We'll run that here in a little while and we'll plug that in inside the Jeep. Now we're going to take our main radio plug and we're going to plug it into the back of our radio brain. Make sure it clicks all the way in. Sometimes it's really a little hard to get all the way in. Now we're going to take the additional cables they've given us here. Make sure and plug all of those in where they go as well. So we do have here a camera connector and that is going to plug over here at the top of our radio. All right. And then you're going to see some additional connections here. So we're going to have one here that says rear camera. We have one also here that says LIN and we have front camera. So that camera that we've already run, we've run it all the way to the dash is going to simply plug in where it says rear camera and our camera is done. That simple. We don't have our front camera on this one. If we decided to buy one, we could. If we had the drive recorder, we would use these additional connections and add that on. It's a DVR that records our trip and our ride. Alpine makes that, it's all plug and play as well. So very, very simple. These additional uh, plugins we have here, they're here for if we added on external amplifiers. So we have an amp turn on wire and such here. All of that is done. So I wanna back up and I wanna talk about what I mentioned very briefly earlier inside the Jeep. This is a factory amplified system and on the amplified systems, it only uses the rear speaker out to feed the whole Jeep. If we leave this alone, we're only getting the rear of the radio feeding the entire Jeep. And if we get a Bluetooth call and the phone call comes through our front speakers, we're not gonna hear them. So we're gonna think something's wrong. They can hear us, we can't hear them on a Bluetooth call. So what we do is we simply unplug these two connectors and we swap them. We take our rear wires, we plug into our front speakers, and same thing again here, we just swap them out. That is gonna feed the front of the radio now to the rear speaker wires, which we know on an Alpine system feeds the whole system. There's notes of this in your directions. It's gonna tell you what to do here, right up here at the top on amplified vehicles that you need to swap those two connectors. So I just wanna make sure you don't miss that because a lot of times you're all the way done, everything works, you're so excited, you make a call, and nobody can hear anybody. <laughs> so we wanna make sure we get that right before we get into the Jeep. Now, if it's not amplified, no factory Alpine badging, no Alpine sub in the back, and you have all eight speaker wires populated when you plug it in, then you just leave these matched color to color. All right, so I'm gonna run our OBD2 port wire next, then we'll get in and bolt all this in, and we're pretty close to wrapping this install up. All right, so a lot of things in this Jeep have already been touched and somebody's already messed up. So this one has a broken OD2 port, you know, right off the bat when we get in here. Normally this is gonna be firmly secured in here and we're gonna plug this in. This is our ADS connector for our OBD2 port. I'm gonna secure that in, try to get this back up in this hole somewhat like it goes. And then we're gonna feed this wire up into our dash around and up to our radio. So as you go, you're gonna find any of the factory harnessing that's up in the dash. We just wanna loop kind of around it. If you do that, it's not gonna droop down. It's not gonna hang down. And if you see that you need more than that, we can always take a zip tie and secure it even further. And as you've seen, I'm not scared to use zip ties to make sure that nothing moves out of where we've put it. around that factory wire that I just grabbed. I may have to get a zip tie and zip tie 
this port back in where it's supposed to go. So again, just looping it up and over any factory harnessing, just getting it over here to the middle of our dash so we can route it up to where our radio is. All right, let's just continue to feed it on up to the radio. All right, so if you have factory Uconnect, uh, the directions are gonna take you to remove the Uconnect module out. Uh, it's as simple as pulling this panel loose. This box here is the Uconnect module. All we're wanting to do is unplug this main connector and with a screwdriver, you can just push into it and normally just push down and you can get it to unplug. It may actually take two. You may have to push the button with one, one hand and then push down with the other. But just like that, we have it unplugged, which is all they're really wanting you to do and that keeps you from having to unbolt it, unplug it, bolt it back in. Uh, in reality, all we did was keep your phone from searching for your factory Bluetooth connection so that you don't get confused and your phone doesn't overtake that connection and cause your calls not to work right. Uh, but that easy, we just popped it out, unplugged it, put it back together. I think all of our cables now are up here. We finished routing our OBD2 wire from the port up into the middle of the dash here where the radio goes. We have our camera wire and we have our GPS and our... Bluetooth microphone. So I'm gonna make all of these a little shorter. We're gonna wrap some Tesla tape around them just to kind of clean it up. And I'm gonna come back here in a minute with our radio. We'll get it all plugged in and bolted into the dash. All right, so we've tidied up our cables just a little bit here. I wanna go ahead and show you this. So you'll see there are two connections here that your FM antenna adapter could plug into. You're gonna to wanna to plug it into the white connector. It's also gonna be the one that has the larger coax style cable. This other one is for factory satellite antenna. So if you wanted to add a Sirius XM uh, tuner to this, you could simply plug it into the back of the radio, plug it into this, um, and there is an adapter available as well that plugs in and locks in a little bit better to allow you to have satellite radio uh, in, in your Jeep still. Uh, with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can always use the Sirius XM app if you don't add the tuner. So a lot of times we would take the USB on the back of the radio, we would replace this cigarette lighter with a USB port uh, because the factory USB port won't be used because that's part of the Uconnect system. Uh, so you could plug in to do Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Since this one is wired, uh, wireless, I mean, I'm gonna route one of those USBs into the glove box so you can do software updates that way if need be. But if you wanna charge your phone, just do it like you've always done, plug it in your cigarette lighter. You're gonna be wirelessly connected for Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So no need to replace that port. And you're gonna see on the back of the radio, it's gonna have a couple USB ports. Very, very simple to just take those, feed them right down through here to the glove box. So if you do need access to them in the future for an update or for whatever reason, they're there without having to go through the trouble of putting in a, a new port into the dash. So I'm gonna start by opening my glove box, feeding these wires through and pulling those out. number two so very simple we just want to get those routed over there for future updates most likely would be the, the main reason we would need to use them so now we're going to see that our plug-in that comes on our harness is going to plug in to this factory connector let's get it where it plugs in right that at the same time is now plugging in all of this we're going to go ahead and take our camera that we ran earlier and we're going to plug it into the connection onto the back of the radio that says rear camera now we have a camera connected and a few more things here so we have our GPS antenna. We're gonna go on the back here. There's a place just for that. We're gonna plug our FM antenna into our antenna connection. And we're gonna take our microphone and you're gonna see on the, where our display port plugged in, and find where that was again. We have this little part here that says microphone in. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in our microphone as well. That way our Bluetooth mic is connected and working. All right, the only thing left now is on our Maestro module, 
We're going to plug in that OBD2 connector. Just going to plug right into this port here. You're probably going, man, there's a lot of wires. What am I going to do with all that? But luckily, we've got a lot of room inside this dash to set these. So we're just going to set them back in here on top of these AC vents on this duct work. There's quite a bit of room there for it to fit. There's a lot of space in this dash. Some of the dashes don't have hardly any room. And remember, we're going to leave this uh, display connection over here to the left. So now we've got our, our harnessings back in place. We've got some USBs pulled into our glove box. And now all we have to do is bolt our screen in with those seven millimeters that we pulled out earlier. Definitely don't over tighten these. These are set in plastic. If you've seen one of the previous installers had busted the plastic down here. We don't want to be the person that does that. that is in place. All of our cords are back in here where they're not going to get in the way when we go back together. We still have our connection here to plug our power window switch back in. Go and drop these cords into our glove box and shut it up. And so previously, earlier off screen after we cut this, I just brought this over and just snapped it right back in. It's very easy to go in. I want to go ahead and put our screws in the bottom of it to get it in better shape than it was because when we got this Jeep and first took it apart, these screws were not actually holding we're actually holding the panel in, so we're going to put those back in where they are. And we'll put our knee bolster back in shortly. Let me grab the main uh, dash panel and let's put it back in. Hmm. We're out this a different spot. Cut this part out. Just not gonna let me feed the cable back in afterwards, and I need to be able to do that. So, get past her. There we go. All right, here we are. So, we've got our new awesome panel here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this little protective strip off the bottom of it. We've moved our vents into it from our old panel and we've left our cable that says exterior or external button side. So we're gonna plug that in. It's gonna get all of these buttons in alignment. This is really cool because this just slides up over the radio, slides into place. Definitely make sure you work this harness back into the dash where it goes. So awesome. Look how good that looks. I think it changed the whole look of the dash. We're going to pull our protective cover off. Actually, probably, yeah, it goes that way. Pull that off to make it look even better. Looks like we're fitting really good around all the sides. I'm going to grab our power window switch and let's get it back in. They don't ever leave you much lead on this switch wiring. Here, see, it snaps right back in. Completely different look. So I'm gonna get our knee bolster back in place. That's gonna be very easy. We'll fire this thing up and we'll go through some of the options and show you just how to use it. I did have one clip I forgot to tell you about earlier that goes right back up in the top here. It's never too late to put the last screw in. All right, let's power it up and see what it looks like. I've done a bunch of these. I really like the backlighting. As you notice here, let me turn our fan speed down so we don't get a lot of noise. They put this green lighting around the radio. I really like the look of that because it matches the green that's in your instrument cluster. The background matches the current color. But if you wanted to change these things, if you wanted to change the background color and such, you could go into your settings menu. All you do is set your e-brake. It's gonna light up setup. We can go there. 
we can go in here to system. I believe it's under system. And we can go to screen and lighting and we can change uh, key illumination. Uh, so you can change the brightness of that. We can also go in here and we can change some colors. Let's see if we can find where to do that. Screen color. So we've got all these different preset colors that are gonna change the look. Let's go to red just so it's quite a bit different. Go back, you'll see we have this red background. That's gonna keep this kind of greenish color on the outside buttons because that matches your instrument cluster and other backlighting in the Jeep. It makes it look like it was factory installed. So here we go. Let's go and let's see what happens if we go to reverse. They actually have to have the Jeep started. It's flipped over. Let's make sure we turn camera on. We go to function. The camera is probably not turned on. Kind of what I feared. We go camera behind us this should allow us to do our wireless apple carplay and wireless android auto once we get connected all right i bet i've got to go back and actually go to the device list and add a new device there we go there's my phone pair yes we match let's allow everything to sync all right, so now I've got my Bluetooth connected. I just went into the settings menu. I've got my e-brake pulled, so settings comes up. I've told it to connect. Now it says, would you like to do CarPlay? I hit start. Wi-Fi is enabled. I tell my phone it's okay to do CarPlay. Do this just one time. Now when we get in, it's gonna automatically connect, automatically come up on screen and check this out. So now we have my phone right here on screen. Missed a couple phone calls, a couple messages while we're doing this, but I can view my music. We have steering wheel controls that work that. You can go into settings, you can cut all these beeps off. Normally I do, not a big fan of the beeps in the background. Let's go back and do that so it's not so annoying while we're doing this. Uh, function. Let's see if I can find where this is. Might be under system. Key sound feedback. I just like turn that down. We don't need that real loud. All right, back to CarPlay. So here you see I've got volume up and down from my steering wheel control buttons. I can change to the next song. Now we're not gonna go through too much music because we definitely don't wanna get uh, copyright infringement playing music that we don't have rights to play. But as you see, we're going through it and it's all working well. Let's go back out of here. So actually, let's go here first. So if you haven't seen Apple CarPlay before or Android Auto, there's always a button down here on the left side. It's gonna change the way your screen looks. So we have navigation, we've got our music. We have all of our phone right here at our fingertips right here on screen. So I think this is awesome, one of the best parts about it. Camera, we have a camera button we can press and at any time see our backup cameras, you can see behind us, uh, there's our uh, one of our camera stands, one of our benches. Uh, we can actually go here and hit navigation. If you hit the navigation icon, it's gonna bring up the nav in your phone from CarPlay or Android Auto. Hitting the music icon is gonna bring us back to one of our music sources. So we also have a home button uh, right up here, if you press home, it's gonna bring up all the available sources at one time. Let's check out our vehicle info. So here's our gauges, as I told you earlier, by tying into that OBD2 port, and start us up. You're gonna see we have the RPM of the engine, the speed, the load, the coolant. There's actually set up here where we can change this to a bunch of different gauges. We can see vehicle info like that our door is open, what our tire pressure is, our voltage, very, very cool to have all of this at your fingertips. Let's cut our vehicle back off. But I hope that you've watched this video and it's encouraged you and it's made you want to do an install upgrade to your system uh, or, or to your audio system here in your Jeep. Uh, actually, let me play some copyright free music because I know I told you it's going to sound a lot better and I can definitely do that and we can make sure it's loud so you can see how much better the sound is in this Jeep now. Let's bring up something here. tight base now. We didn't have that before. <laughs> Timed out because I had the key off. Let's turn it back on here. 
We've got good clear highs, a lot more overall volume, good bass. Let's get back into playing our song here. Come on. It's reconnecting to my phone where we just had to cut off and back on. So all of that increase happened by a very, very simple radio swap out. So let me show you a couple things before we wrap it up. I was ready to wrap it up, but now I'm excited. I want to show you some other things about the radio. Let's go into setup, and I want to show you what we can do sound-wise that we couldn't do before. All right. Device function. So we should be able to go in here and go to our audio settings. Actually, let me go back here. All we do is bring this down. Forgetting it, we're on a 509. So on the new version here, pressing that button brings up this screen. Now we have all this adjustment. We have bass and treble, but we can go into an actual EQ and you're gonna see we have this crazy parametric EQ that has a tremendous amount of adjustment. Front and rear is independent. Crossovers can be set independent. We can do digital time correction. So we can actually measure out how far we are from each speaker to create a great sound stage. And then we have your standard uh, fade, balance, sub on and off and such. So uh, very, very cool, all the things that we can do. Um, this is the, one of the preset EQs. You can go flat and just flatten it all out, which is actually gonna probably sound a little better on the way we've got it set up. But so much more control than we had from that standard basic Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, radio. Uh, so much more that we can adjust. If you want more bass, you can turn it up. If you want more treble, you can turn it up. Uh, but everything in between. So you could actually take an RTA and adjust front and rear independent and make it sound as awesome as you had a really high end DSP, but built into your radio. So back to this CarPlay, Android Auto, all those latest functions, everything about the Jeep is kept functioning. So we haven't lost anything. Steering wheel controls are still working. We've now added the backup camera and added, I think a much better look. All right, so even filming this and taking all the time it took to show you this install, this really only took us about three hours. That was a new backup camera. That was a new radio. Everything installed properly as you've seen step by step. Normally we could probably knock this out a little bit faster, not filming it. But I think the end result has been awesome. This dash has been transformed. Our Jeep looks so much better. It sounds tremendously better. And the functionality going down the road is great. Now we have hands-free calling. We have our maps at our fingertips right up here on screen. We can use our voice assistant to call people to change music, to decide where we're gonna go and bring it up on our maps. So from a safety standpoint, much better. Technology, so much better. And at the prices of new Jeeps, this is a great idea to do to your JK instead of having to go out and buy a new one to add these features in. But I hope this has uh, encouraged you to take the step of maybe doing your own installation. I hope it's shown you uh, a lot about what you would gain if you did this. I think Alpine has an amazing radio and a great solution for your Jeep. And I hope that you agree with me. If you have questions about it, comment below in the video. If you like the video, definitely click that little like button, subscribe to our channel to see other audio installations on Jeeps, whether it be speakers and subs and other things we're gonna do. We also do a lot of Harleys and other power sports. So definitely follow the channel. I think you'll like it. Share this video with your friends, tell other people about it. If you're in some of the Jeep groups, copy this video, post it in there, show them what we've got going on here at Volunteer Audio in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. If this is beyond what you think you would want to do as far as installation, reach out, one 30 audio You can email me at sales at Vol Audio. Uh, reach out, we'll set up an appointment, we'll get you down here. You can see the Great Smoky Mountains, all the beautiful scenery around us. We're five miles from Windrock Mountain, so that's the largest privately owned ATV park in the country. Great place to take your Jeep also while you're here. So definitely give us a call and we'd love to meet you and upgrade your Jeep and make it sound and look as good as this one does. Thank you so much for watching and as always, God bless.